Hello and welcome to the History Channel. Today we are going to look at the history of the Thirumalai Nayakar Mahal, the palace in Madurai. We do know that our kings lived in palaces. But in South India, you don't find many of them in existence. Where did the Cholas live? Where did the Pandyas live? It is very likely that in their times there existed a belief that only the homes of the gods could be built of durable material and the houses of humans had to be built with perishable material. Probably that is the reason why we do know where the palaces stood but we have no idea how the palaces looked. But one of the great survivors of history is the Thirmalai Nayakar Mahal, the palace in Madurai. And it has a fascinating past. The Vijayanagar Empire was all powerful in the early years of the 16th century. And wherever the empire went, the kings, the emperors appointed viceroys to rule in their place. In what we recognize today as Tamil Nadu, there were three viceroys for the Vijayanagar Empire. The Tanjavur Nayak, the Shenji Nayak and the Madurai Nayak. The technical term for the Viceroy was the Nayak. In 1529, we know that the first Nayak of Madurai, Vishwanatha, took charge. And he ruled in the name of the Emperor in Hampi. But in 1565, the Vijayanagar Empire received a severe jolt from which it never survived. That was the Battle of Thalikota, in which the five, the confederation of the five states of Berar, Bidar, Ahmednagar, Bijapur and Golconda fought a war against Vijayanagar and decisively defeated it. Thereafter, the Nayaks in the south became independent and Madurai became home to the Nayak dynasty. In that Nayak dynasty came Thirumalai Nayaka in 1623 and he ruled till 1659. He was one of the most powerful kings of that dynasty and under him, his kingdom comprised much of what we today recognize as Southern Tamil Nadu. He did a lot of work in the propagation of South Indian art, architecture and culture. Much of what we recognize today as the Meenakshi Sundareshwara temple in Madurai is his handiwork. He did a lot of work in the Arahar Kovil in Arahar Malay and he also built the Gopuram that we see today outside the Sri Villiputur temple. Thirumalai Nayak was not only a patron of the arts, he was also a great cultural influence. Prior to his time, the Arahar coming to Madurai and descending into the river Vaigai was the festival that would happen in the month of Chitrai, which is April-May. And the celestial wedding of Meenakshi to Sundareshwara would happen in Panguni, which was March-April. Now, what Thirumalai Nayakar felt was that these two events happening just within a month of each other was displacing a lot of local work. People were getting too involved in the festivals. He decided to combine the two, which is why even today you have the Meenakshi Sundareshwara wedding also happening in the month of Chitrai, which is April-May and Arahar comes from Arahar Kovil and descends into the Vaigai river at the same time. Wherever Thirumalai Nayak went, he had a sculpture of himself in the temple pillars and you cannot miss him with a huge paunch standing there. A very impressive personality. Thirmala Nayak began work on his palace in Madurai in 1636. And when completed, it encompassed 554,000 square feet. It must have been truly amazing in its time. Today, what we have of the palace is only 25% of the original structure. And that is a portion that in his time was known as the Swarga Vilasa. When you go there today, it just stuns you with its scale. There is an entrance courtyard and then there is a Darbar hall behind it with a dome on top of it. Each pillar holding up that Darbar hall is 43 feet in height and the dome itself rises to a height of almost 70 feet. The entire structure has a foundation of stone and then it is built with brick, covered with lime paste, chunam in Tamil terms and made by mixing limestone with eggshell 
and with certain native nuts ground into a fine paste which when applied and dried formed a covering that was almost like marble, so smooth and shiny. And as time went along, it became harder and harder and nothing would dislodge the plaster from the stone that it was covering. It's a beautiful structure. When you look up to the top, you will find angels and gods in flight, all done in plaster work just below the dome. This was Thirmalai Nayak's chamber hall and this is where he met with all his ministers. He witnessed music and dance performances. The palace was at its glorious best when Thirmalai Nayak ruled. He passed away in 1659 and thereafter came his son and his grandson. The grandson Chokanatha felt that Tirichi would be a better capital for the Nayak kingdom and shifted there. He needed to build a palace and he demolished much of Thirmalai Nayakar Mahal, transported the material there and constructed a residence for himself. Even today, that is known as Rani Mangamal's palace and stands just near the rock fort. It's a museum that belongs to the state government. With that, Thirmalai Nayak Mahal in Madurai became a very dilapidated structure. And it would have vanished. In 1792, the painters William and Thomas Daniel came from England travelled all around India and they showed parts of Thirmalai Nayak Mahal in their work and you can see that it is crumbling. If you want to get an idea of how big Thirmalai Nayak Mahal was, you get out of the Mahal, get into an auto and ask him to take you to an area known as Pat Thun or 10 pillars. He'll take you some distance. Then finally, you'll come to a very narrow street through which you'll be able to walk with great difficulty. Shops on both sides, lots of people. And suddenly in the middle of it all, you will see 10 huge pillars, each one of them of around 50 feet in height. What are those pillars doing over there? How have they come there? You realize then that that was one part of Thirmalai Nayakar Mahal. In fact, that was the king's bedroom. It was known as Ranga Vilasa. Nothing survives of it except those 10 pillars. All of it would have vanished had not Lord Napier, the governor of Madras Presidency, in the 1860s, commanded his architect, Robert Fellows Chisholm, to go to Madurai and study the Mahal. Chisholm did not like it at all. He hated the journey, he complained about the heat. But when he went there, he was mesmerized. He had never seen a work like this. He had already begun work on the Presidency College in Madras City, and he was supposed to start work on the University Senate House, but he changed the design to incorporate several elements of the Thirmalai Nayak Mahal in it. Thereafter, wherever Chisham went and he built in Madras, he built in Andhra, he built in Baroda, he began incorporating several elements of the Thirmalai Nayak Mahal into his designs. This became the Indo-Saracenic style and the British felt that wherever the empire went, this should be the style in which they ought to build. And therefore, all over India, in South Africa, in Canada, in New Zealand, wherever the British Empire went, structures were done in this design known as the Indo-Saracenic style. It's very interesting to see that two palaces, the Chepok Palace in Madras and the Thirmalai Nayakar Mahal in Madurai, really laid the foundation for this particular style. Even New Delhi, when it was constructed between 1911 and the 1920s, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, for instance, all of which incorporated elements taken from these places and were true adherents of the Indo-Saracenic style. So much of work coming from this particular palace. Have you been there? Have you seen it? If you haven't, you must go and take a look. It's well worth a visit. If you like this channel, like it, share it and subscribe it. And I promise to be back with you with more stories. Music